This video is about a treatment for people with melanoma called Tabentafusp. I'll be describing what it is, how it works, and who it's given to. Tabentafusp is a very new sort of treatment. It's been designed with the aim of creating a bridge between a person's cancer cells and T cells of their immune system. Because it involves the person's immune system, it's a form of immunotherapy. In this video, I'll try to answer these questions. Who is Tabentafusp for? What is Tabentafusp? How does it work? Why do you have to do HLA matching? Does Tabentafusp cure people? What sort of side effects does it cause? And finally, where next? Where do we go to from here? Let's start with who it's for. Tabentafusp has mostly been tested out as a treatment for people with uveal melanoma, melanoma affecting the eye. This type of melanoma is very rare. Just three to 5% of melanomas are uveal melanomas. In around half the people who develop this cancer, it spreads to new locations in the body. If this happens, it becomes very difficult to treat. It's these people that Tabentafusp has mostly been given to so far, so it's these people who are most likely to be offered it, for the time being at least. Now let's look at what Tabentafusp is and how it works. Tabentafusp is a new sort of treatment. Sometimes it gets described as a bispecific protein. What this means is that it's double-ended and each of its ends attaches to something different. One of its ends attaches to a tiny little piece of a protein called GP100. GP100 is often made by melanoma cells and tiny fragments of it end up in a little cup structure on their surface. One end of Tabentafusp attaches to this little protein piece. The other end of Tabentafusp is designed to attach to something called CD3. CD3 is always found on the surface of T cells. As I've said in other melanoma focus videos, T cells are powerful white blood cells of our immune system. They are great at getting rid of virus infections and they're also great at killing cancer cells. When Tabentafusp attaches to GP100 with one end and to CD3 with its other end, this creates a physical bridge connecting a T cell to a melanoma cell. The T cell then kills the melanoma cell. An infusion of Tabentafusp will contain millions and millions of copies of this double-ended treatment. So the aim is that millions of T cells will all start killing the person's cancer cells. Now let's move on to the next question. Why do we have to do a test called HLA matching before giving it to someone? Before someone receives Tabentafusp, their doctor first needs to find out if they're eligible. This involves something called HLA matching. The doctor uses HLA matching to check whether Tabentafusp will be able to attach to the GP100 on the person's cancer cells. GP100 sits inside a little cup called an HLA protein, and the shape of these cups varies from person to person. Tabentafusp needs to connect both with GP100 and with the cup that it sits in, in order for it to work. Each of us inherits HLA cups of different shapes from our parents. We each inherit a mixture, some from our mother and some from our father. Tabentafusp can attach to GP100 if it's sitting inside a cup called HLA-A0201, which up to a half of people have depending on their ethnic background. So, before receiving Tabentafusp, the doctor asks for HLA matching to be done to find out if the person has inherited HLA-A0201. If not, there's no point giving them Tabentafusp as it wouldn't work. Now let's look at how much Tabentafusp has helped people with uveal melanoma and the sorts of side effects it causes. These are some of the results from a large study involving over 350 people with advanced uveal melanoma. All of them had the right HLA cup, called HLA-A0201. Each person was randomly allocated to receive either Tabentafusp 
or their doctor's choice of treatment. Their doctor could choose between two checkpoint inhibitors, ipilimumab or pembrolizumab, or decarbazine, a form of chemotherapy. As you can see, a year after receiving treatment, more of the people given to Bentifusp were still alive compared to the people given one of the other treatments. 73% versus 59%. However, a bit strangely, not many people's tumours had shrunk by very much. But because of the improvement in survival times, this trial was deemed a success. The side effects of tibentafusp seem to be generally quite mild, and only around 2% or so of people chose to stop treatment because of them. One of the possible side effects of tibentafusp is called cytokine release syndrome. This is also seen with some of the other treatments that also engage T cells, and it generally means the person develops a high temperature, chills, and a sudden drop in blood pressure. Clearly, most people given to Bentifusp aren't cured with this treatment, at least not in the studies conducted so far. This has led scientists to wonder why, so that they can make improvements. It seems that sometimes the problem is with the person's cancer cells. Either they're not making GP100, or they've lost the little HLA cups that it sits in or the problem rests with the environment inside the melanoma tumours and the cancer cells are too well protected or the T cells are worn out and can't kill them. So where do we go from here? Over the next few years, we'll see the results of other studies in which tibentafusp has been given to many more people with melanoma, either uveal melanoma or the more common cutaneous melanoma. There are also studies testing out giving tibentafusp in combination with other treatments, like the checkpoint inhibitors, such as nivolumab or pembrolizumab. At the moment, we don't know what will work best. I'll finish with a summary. I began by saying that tibentafusp is a new type of cancer treatment. It creates a physical connection between cancer cells and white blood cells called T cells. When the two cells are brought together by tibentafusp, the T cell kills the cancer cell. Because the treatment will contain millions of copies of tibentafusp, hopefully millions of cancer cells get destroyed. So far, this treatment has mostly been given to people with uveal melanoma. This is a rare type of cancer that starts in the eye, but in half of people who develop it, it eventually spreads elsewhere and it's very difficult to treat. Tibentafusp does seem to be a helpful treatment for uveal melanoma, more helpful than other treatments, such as chemotherapy or a checkpoint inhibitor. But it's still early days. There's a long way to go before we'll know who tibentafusp can help the most and whether it should be given in combination with other treatments. <laughs>